I greet you this wonderful morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa coming to you live this wonderful morning on the scripture prescription. I want to read the Bible in the book of Jeremiah chapter number 17 from verse number 5 to verse number 8. And I believe that you're going to be blessed. Jeremiah 17 verse number 5 through to 8. The Bible tells us, Thus says the Lord, Cast is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert, and he shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the patched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Verse number 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like at waters which spread out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Child of God, my message to us this morning is about trusting the Lord, trusting God. And the Bible has given us two illustrations, one of a man who trusts in another man and makes flesh his strength and the heart departs from the Lord. And the Bible gives us a description that this kind of man will be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places of the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. It's a dangerous thing to trust in your own self. Now the Bible tells us that cast is a man who puts his trust in another man. Now, it, that Bible doesn't tell us that you will not have a relationship with man or that man will not come your way to assist you. The Bible doesn't talk about that. But it talks about when you seed your trust from God and give it to man. The Bible tells us, and you make your flesh your strength. There are many people in this world who trust in themselves so much. Even there are people, there are countries which have called themselves superior superior in the world but you see clearly right now because of what is going on some of these nations have been adversely hit by the pandemic irrespective that they are superior they are called superpowers or whatever you might want to describe them as you can see that they have been brought down now this is something that i would like to discuss this can happen to anybody you can never make your flesh your strength there are people who boast about the properties they have, the wealth they have, their level of education. There are people who boast about many things in their lives. And it's not a wrong thing to achieve greatness in life. It's not a wrong thing to pursue education and knowledge. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I've discussed this before when discussing about the, the three pillars of society. I've already discussed about the intellectual pillar, the political pillar, and the spiritual pillar. So it's not a wrong thing to seek to acquire wealth. By the way, Solomon was full of wisdom and he had a lot of wealth by virtue of the wisdom that God gave him. In fact, the queen of Sheba traveled all the way to go just and marvel at the wisdom of Solomon. And the lady came with gifts, gold, you know, precious ornaments to the king. So it's not a wrong thing to pursue wealth. But you should never make this to be your God. Or you should never trust in your flesh as your strength. It's not the right thing to do. And the Bible tells us, you shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see good even when it comes. You see, a shrub, even when there's any good thing coming, it will never notice because the, the environment it finds itself in is an absolutely inhabitable kind of environment. But there is hope. If you read verse number 7, the Bible tells us, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. Now, trusting in the Lord means you are hoping in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spread out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green, and will be anxious in the year, it will be anxious, will not be anxious. In the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. 
It's an amazing thing to trust and hope in the Lord. It doesn't mean that hard times will not come. It doesn't mean that challenges will not come. But the Bible tells us when we trust the Lord, we shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. That means when challenges come, we trust in the Lord, we hope in the Lord, we will still make it in the name of the Lord. The Bible tells us its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought. Even if drought comes, even if challenges come, our leaf will remain, our leaves will remain green in the name of the Lord. And we shall not cease in yielding fruit. Hallelujah. Now I want to tell you that there was a time that Isaac contemplated leaving the land where he dwelt. He wanted to go to Egypt because there's so much drought. But the Lord told him, dwell in the place because when here, I will bless you in the name of the Lord. Now, child of God, I want you to listen to me. Challenges will come. Trouble times will come. Times of need will come. Times when we are anxious in life will come. But I want to tell you one thing. Bible tells us even when there will be, uh, when there'll be drought, the Lord says we'll not be anxious because our leaf will remain green. In moments of great uh, tribulation, great uh, uh, anxious moments, challenges of life, but still guarantees us that our leaves will be green in the name of the Lord. We will not cease from yielding fruit. And right now, I want to speak to the church of Jesus Christ, not just in Kenya, but across the world. Now, I have said before, before God does something extraordinary, there are certain events that take place. You see, before God brought deliverance to Noah, Noah took many years talking about the gospel, preaching that, you know, there'll be rain that will destroy. People never heard until when Noah got into the ark and the rain came. That's when people realized what Noah was talking about. The fact that people don't necessarily hear what you're saying, the fact that people are ridiculing the church right now, doesn't mean that God is not in control. That the Lord is not in control. The Lord is in control. The Lord is in control. Hallelujah. The Lord is in control. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, child of God, that our God is in control, is in charge in our, in our lives. In charge in our lives. What I mean by in charge is means that God knows the end from the beginning. He knows where we are going, uh, where we are coming from and where we are going in the name of the Lord. Now, this is extraordinary. If we trust in the Lord, if we listen to the Lord, if we know that the Lord is indeed on our side, we can be sure that we will be able to face tomorrow. Now, sometimes there are people who are, as I've said, ridiculing the church. Now look to what Romans chapter number 3 and verse number 3 says. For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God to be without effect? Certainly not. Indeed, let God be true. But every man be a liar as it's written, that you may be justified in your words and you may overcome when you are judged. Now, even if some people do not believe in God, their unbelief does not nullify the faithfulness of God. So whether people, some people don't believe in the gospel, don't believe in what we are talking about, don't believe in what we are saying, their lack of belief has never made the faithfulness of God to be without effect. God's faithfulness still continues to be with effect. So I, went, I want to tell you, child of God, that even in this season, the Lord is setting up the church on a path to rise, a path to be listened to, a path to make sense, a path or a time to be able to influence society by what we believe. So let us keep on trusting in God. Let us keep on hoping in God. Let us keep on waiting on God. Let us keep on holding on on God because he's indeed an amazing God. I want to speak a blessing in your life this morning. Last week, I prophesied that it was going to be a great week for Kenya. And yes, we have seen uh, more people getting out of hospital from the pandemic as opposed to those who have been uh, declared to be uh, positive. This is good news for the nation. And I want to say that we continue to observe the things that government is telling us to do. 
will observe each and every protocol. And we thank God because of our leadership. We're still praying for wisdom upon them, sobriety. And we pray that the Lord will continue to grant them the grace to make this nation move forward. This week, I want to declare in the name of the Lord, it shall be well. The Bible tells us, tell ye the righteous, it shall be well with them. The word of prophecy for this week is that it shall be well in the name of Jesus Christ. Allah, confess it in your life, confess it in your family, confess it in your place of work, confess it, confess it, confess it. It shall be well in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I want to pray this morning in Jesus' name and the Lord bless you. There are people who are not going to work anymore because workplaces have been closed. Uh, there are people who can't gather uh, you know, in this season because uh, even place of worship have been closed, all these things. But I want to declare to you in the name of the Lord, there's something that God is working in the spiritual realm and I believe that it will turn and quickly and shortly in the name of the Lord. This is your word. It shall be well with us in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall be well with Kenya in the name of the Lord. This is God's word for us this morning. We want to hold on it. We want to go by it. We want to believe because the Bible has just told us, trust in the Lord and hope in God in the name of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord supernaturally appear in your life for the glory of his name. The Lord bless you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you because of the truth of your word, the word we are holding on. Thank you, Father, for the prophecy for the week. It shall be well with us. Father, we want to hold on this truth of your word. And we pray that, Lord Jesus, we go about our business. As we continue, Lord, wait upon you for the situation to get better. We confess it shall be well with us. I want to give you glory. I want to give you honor. For this, we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. May the good Lord bless you. This has been your host, Pastor Johnston Sakwa coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription, your daily morning dose of the Word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m. in the name of the Lord. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.